I work uh, on a special issue which is national identity in museums as presented through the lens of historical and archaeological museums in Central Asia. Uh, before I started my project three years ago and at the very beginning before I started conducting any field work in Central Asia I was surprised how difficult it was for me to trace any archaeological and historical museums anywhere. There are very few books in, uh, regarding this region and uh, it was very difficult for me to find any information uh, online. And uh, uh, I conducted a kind of research aside to analyze what it looks like for a normal traveler who, who wants to go to Central Asia uh, and who is interested in visiting Central Asia museums. But first, let's see what the Central Asia is. It encompasses five, or sometimes we can find in the recharge of, uh, that there are six countries. This is Kazakhstan, which uh, theoretically speaking is not a part of Central Asia because Kazakhstani uh, football players, they take part in European Cup, but uh, culturally it is Central Asia and it is considered to be Central Asia. It is Uzbekistan with the capital in Tashkent. Uh, the old capital of uh, Kazakhstan is Almaty, uh, now it's uh, Astana. Kyrgyzstan with its capital Bishkek, Tajikistan Dushanbe and Turkmenistan Ashgabat. Some also, uh, I mean, sometimes we can also find information that Afghanistan is a part of Central Asia, but uh, I, will, I deal with former republics of um, the USSR. These are these five countries or five stands, as we can find in uh, sources. Uh, we have to say that uh, this is a very interesting region from cultural and historical point of view starting with uh, Silk Road that dates back to Roman period, Roman uh, invasion of Mongols, uh, Chinese period in the history, Russian Empire, Soviet uh, Empire, and contemporary history is also very interesting. So it already begins to be, it starts to be a tourist destination, but as I was conducting um, field work and conducting interviews, lots of people complained about lack of tourism. What are the main elements that make uh, destination accessible or interesting to visit? Of course, historical and cultural values, political stability, infrastructure, but the blood of tourism is information. This is definitely the truth. And um, there is lack of this tourism, of this information and um, I asked, uh, I uh, conducted a research, uh, I made um, several research questions whether it is possible to communicate in a muse with a museum in order to get information about the museum functioning, if a museum has its own website, what, in what way it is structured and organized, if there is a virtual museum, what tools there are to present the collections, are there 3D in, uh, interactive exhibits, or it's purely descriptive, what is the language of the languages of the target groups, Russian speaking, non-Russian speaking, if it's non-Russian speaking, if it's English speakers or local languages, because uh, very few people can speak Kyrgyz outside of Kyrgyzstan or Uzbek or Tajik. What kind of information is available about the museum as well uh, as about the region, its history and culture, if a museum plays a role as a platform, disseminating cultural or tourist information and whether there are links from the website of virtual museum to other institutions and to what institutions. I decided to analyze the following museums, the National Archaeological Museum of Turkmenistan, Ashgabat National Museum of History in Turkmenistan. I'm not going to, to read all these museums because if anybody is interested, you can have a look. And the result, um, first, uh, as I don't have much time, I will not talk about all the results because the time is going very fast, so I will concentrate on two 
uh, case studies. First of all, the national, uh, I mean, uh, Turkmenistan will analyze and uh, Kyrgyzstan. Uh, the case of Turkmenistan is very easy. I mean, there is no uh, information at all. Uh, no, but, <laughs> but it is. It has its reasons. It's not just because they didn't put a new website. It is this, uh, this country, together with Uzbekistan, are considered by the organization watchdogs of freedom or something like this, uh, enemies of, uh, of the internet, and only 2% of Turkmen are connected to the internet. The country is governed by um, a dictator whose name I'm not able to pronounce, and he is life elected. Um, so. Um, they don't want uh, tourists. In 2014, there were only 1,600 tourists. The visa regime is very strict. I tried a couple of times to obtain a Turkmen visa. It's first, it's very expensive. Later, it is only possible uh, to hire uh, an organized tour and to have a, a guide, a, a, a guide who, to whom uh, you have to pay the hotel, the trip, the food, and he is he or she he because this is a patriarchal society. So he um, has to stay all the time with the tourist and follow uh, his steps. Um, therefore, it's. Oh, it's practically impossible for an average tourist to obtain a um, visa, uh, Turkmen visa and to travel to Turkmenistan unless you buy a guided um, trip. And now uh, the State History Museum uh, of Bishkek in Kyrgyzstan and the National Historical and Archaeological Museum Complex Suleiman Osh uh, in um, Kyrgyzstan. Uh, I will skip a few. Uh, the, uh, this is the task that people were to accomplish, to find the museum details, to check the opening hours, and so on and so on. Uh, mm, yes. Um, Yes, this is the uh, website of the uh, Museum of Kyrgyzstan. It disappears and appears. When I talk to uh, the um, authorities of the museum and to people working at um, State University of Bishkek, they told me, oh, it costs money. It's very expensive. We have no money to, to maintain a proper website. But still, this website sometimes is available and uh, sometimes it disappears. Uh, once I was able to trace, and another museum that I was, this is, uh, yes, uh, indexing, it's also very important. I tried to, uh, the, um, to trace the museum in, uh, and the, the um, participant of the survey were uh, trying hard to trace the museum uh, in Osh. And as we can see, uh, when you write, when you Google, when you try to Google Suleiman Museum or, or in different versions like Suleiman, and, uh, you cannot find any information. Still, if you try hard, um, no, sorry, uh, the, I don't know, yeah, okay. Still, if you try hard, you can, uh, the, the slide has just disappeared, I think. No, this is Kazakhstan. This is Central Museum of Kazakhstan. I think I must. Yes, I uh, know. This is Samarkand. <coughs> yes. Mm. This. Uh, National History Archaeology Museum Complex, uh, this website is very important to uh, disseminate information. First, uh, the city of Osh is very uh, difficult to access. All the uh, airlines that operate, this is the city in the southern part of Kyrgyzstan, and all the airlines that operate to Osh from Bishkek, it is impossible to get there from Europe, so you have to get to Bishkek first and later either to take a plane and all the uh, airlines are uh, listed on a blacklist of uh, Yata so uh, people may feel a bit scared. There is another option uh, you can get by highway but infrastructure is very poor and uh, the trip that uh, has like 300 kilometers 
it takes about 15 hours and it's necessary to pass through a tunnel that is very purely uh, illuminated pra practically with no ventilation so people have to be very determined to uh, get uh, to this museum. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I'm not sarcastic, it's just uh, how it is. It's reality. <laughs> it's, uh, it's reality. It's reality. And um, this museum is very interesting because it was created, this is a very, um, one of the, this is the only place in Kyrgyzstan that it's uh, on the heritage, on the UNESCO heritage list. It's a holy mountain. And um, it's considered, when I conducted interview and when I read, it used to be considered, and now it's still, uh, it's still considered to be a holy mountain, and a free uh, pilgrimage to Osh uh, equals to one uh, pilgrimage uh, to Mecca. To, so so uh, uh, in 1976, at us, the Soviets considered this holy mountain <coughs> a very dangerous uh, place of Islam, they opened, they, they, in order to demystify, desacralize the mountain, they opened a museum uh, inside the mountain with practically no exhibits. Uh, so uh, fake exhibits like fake uh, snake or just uh, collections taken at random. But uh, the website, uh, which is very difficult to find uh, when we uh, try to uh, when we try to find it online, provide uh, provides lots of information about the region, about uh, weather, about infrastructure, and about the hotels. It was practically the only museum that provides information about the region, which is very important because no museum catalogs are available in uh, all the museums that I have visited. It was possible to buy one museum catalog in museum in Tashkent, but uh, I bought it illegally because uh, uh, it wasn't to be sold. So I just, to, 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 I just had to bribe a lady selling the tickets. And she told me, okay, I have one. <laughs> uh, and, um, uh, these countries, Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan, they are very poor countries. In Kyrgyzstan, 95% uh, of the land are mountains. And uh, after the dissolution of the USSR, they, uh, the, the old uh, Soviet plants stopped working. There is, va there is very, ah, okay, ah, I'm finishing. There is very high level of unemployment. The GDP per capita in, in Tajikistan is about $1,400 per year, which is not much. In Kyrgyzstan, it's $1,600. And the, local, the locals, they say that tourism is the only one option for them. But still, without accessibility, without proper infrastructure, or knowing that, uh, that all this information about um, Planes about in uh, about the very poor state of roads. Uh, it's very difficult to attract tourists. Tourists, and um, presenting a website, presenting the region on a website is a very basic tool, which I find not so expensive comparing to building new roads. Um, as I run out of time, I would like to thank you. Yeah. It was just a very strong presentation. Thank you. Bye.